Hi friends, my name is Abby, welcome back. Today we're going to make two snacks. We're going to make Cheez-Its and um, Jell-O from fruit juice. I don't know about you, but my family is super snacky, and as much as you might say, just eat fruit and veggies with dip and trail mix, there is definitely a time and a place for that, but I also like Cheez-Its and Doritos and fruit snacks and all the delicious snacky foods from the grocery store but in an effort to save some money and eat a little bit less processed food, um, just using some real food ingredients, we are going to start making some of our snacks at home. So like I said, today is Cheez-Its and fruit juice Jello. So to start out with the Cheez-Its, the dough needs to sit in the fridge for a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and grate some cheese. It says to like measure out your cheese and get eight ounces, but I don't have a food scale I don't typically cook, I don't know, that specific. So we're just gonna do about a cup because a cup is eight ounces. So we're just gonna assume that about a cup of shredded cheese is eight ounces. Um, I do like to shred all of our own cheese just because the pre-shredded stuff from the grocery store has just some weird ingredients like coating it so that the cheese doesn't get stuck together. So that's just kind of a simple thing. That looks like about a cup, perfect. Um, so it's just kind of a simple thing to cut out some unnecessary ingredients is just grate it yourself and it's cheaper and it lasts longer. Um, we'll just measure that. See, when you stick it all in there, perfect. There is a quarter cup of softened butter in there. I apparently <laughs> put that on a little too tight. Come out cheese. There we go. Um, quarter cup of butter, eight ounces or about one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now that this is all in here together, we're gonna blend it for four to five minutes until it is just one smooth mass. This has been beating for about four minutes and it's all come together into, let me try to show you. It's all come together into a nice paste. So we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt and then one and a quarter cups of flour. Let me just scrape off. The recipe says this is going to be really crumbly, so we're just going to add the water and go from there. You're supposed to add two to three tablespoons of water. So we're going to start with one. I'll turn it back on and we'll see if we need to add any more. I added a total of two tablespoons of water. And the dough is kind of starting to stick together, like if I press it. So I think we're gonna call it good. I don't wanna to add too much water. So we're gonna say this is good and go from there. This dough reminded me of a pie crust in that it was super crumbly until you started to actually push it together and then it did stick together pretty well. We're just gonna say this is good. You're supposed to chill it for about an hour. So I'm just gonna kind of squish it all together. We'll wrap it in plastic wrap and throw it in the fridge for an hour while we work on our jello. For our juice jello, we're gonna start with one cup of juice on the stove. Just gonna turn that on to medium high. Um, this is cranberry juice, and we're gonna add three tablespoons of gelatin to this. It did say heaping, so I guess I should add, let me just add a tiny bit more, because those first two were not heaping. We added our three tablespoons of gelatin. I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this around. Maybe I should have brought it to a boil before I added the gelatin. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember that part of the recipe and I don't have it right in front of me at this moment. So we're just gonna mix it all in there and it will hopefully be fine. So we're going to bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna add two more cups of juice. So you need a total of three tablespoons of gelatin and three cups of juice. We are doing 
one cup of cranberry and two cups of orange juice today, but I'm following the recipe from Michelle at More Than Farmers, and she used apple juice and orange juice. She also said sometimes they do coconut milk and orange juice for like a creamsicle kind of thing, which sounds amazing. I double checked the recipe and I was right. It said to mix it all together and then bring to a boil. So no worries, everyone. We did not screw it up yet. Our juice and gelatin has come up to a boil. So I'm gonna just go ahead and turn that off. And now we're gonna add our two more cups of juice. So again, this is cranberry juice and I'm adding in orange juice, but you can do just about whatever kind of juice or liquid you would prefer. I know I made jello with our elderberry syrup at one point. My toddler was not a huge fan of that, but that was several months ago. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping he's changed his mind now. But we're just going to give this a good stir. I know the recipe says to add some vanilla and also some honey, but I just want to add straight juice this time. We're just going to do juice and gelatin and see how it turns out and we can make it fancier next time if we feel like it needs any adjusting. Give everything one last mix and then we're going to pour it into our 8x8 pan, put it in the fridge and just let it cool for a few hours. This dough has been chilling for about an hour. I just opened it up. So we're gonna get our parchment paper. I am gonna crinkle this so it behaves a little bit better. I'm gonna let this sit a couple minutes because it is like very solid, so we're gonna let it come up to temperature just a little bit so it's easier to roll out. It seems to have softened up a little bit, it's been about five minutes, so we're gonna give it another shot. If you make this, either don't put the dough in the fridge for the full time or definitely let it sit out to just warm up and soften up a bit. This dough was extremely stiff. I had to use a lot of muscle to try to roll it out and I ended up just letting it sit there until it softened up. I did have to add some flour because it kept sticking to the rolling pin, um, but do not leave this in the fridge for the full hour. I just found that was way too long, at least for my dough. It did not work for me. If you look at this recipe, it says to measure out one inch squares. And we are just not going to do that. So I'm just going to estimate about one inch squares. And we're gonna use a pizza cutter. You could also use a knife if you want to, but the pizza cutter just rolls really nice. and makes this super easy. The instructions do say to put a single hole right in the middle of your cracker, which would make it look a lot more like a Cheez-It, but I didn't wanna take the time and effort to do that, so I just went ahead and cut them all into squares and then stabbed it with a fork. I did have a lot of issues with the crackers kind of like pulling up off the parchment paper every time I stabbed it, so I would recommend going ahead and just kind of poking all over the dough to make the holes first and then cutting after you've already made the holes. That would just be a whole lot easier, I think. My oven is preheated to 375, so we're gonna put these in for, um, it says 15 to 17 minutes, so I will put them in for about 10 minutes and I'll probably rotate the tray and just check them then. I don't think these middle pieces are quite done yet, but the thinner edges are starting to get pretty dark, so we're gonna pull those off quick and then we'll let the middle ones go for just a little bit longer. The thinner edge pieces came out at about 14 minutes and then these came out around 17. So we're gonna let them cool down a little bit and then give them a taste test. We have our two snacks. I'm gonna cut them up so we can give them a taste test. This jello has been sitting for about an hour and a half and it seems to be solid. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit so we can try it. All right, the real test will be when my toddler wakes up. Um, he'll be able to tell us what he really feels about this. So my husband is here with me off camera right now to give this a taste test. 
It's orange juice and cranberry juice. It was supposed to have a little bit of honey in it, but I left that part out. Mm -hmm. I think it tastes good. I mm -hmm. mean, it tastes like orange juice and cranberry juice. Jello. Like, it's good. How could it be bad? All right. We have eaten a bunch of these cheeses already. They're very good. I did realize after rereading the recipe, we are supposed to brush the top with oil and then sprinkle it with salt. I think they would have been too salty if we did that. So if you really want that salty layer on top, maybe half the salt actually in the batter and then half of the salt on top of the dough, completely up to you. But these are delicious as well. If you want them to look more like an actual store-bought cheese it, obviously you should be using orange cheddar. We pretty much only buy white cheddar just because milk is white. So the cheese in my mind should also be white. If you get orange cheese, they just add a little um, extra ingredient to it to make it orange. But these are white, white cheddar and they're delicious. Highly recommend both of these recipes. I could definitely see us making both of these recipes again. They are very tasty. Let me know if there's any other homemade snacks I should try to make. And maybe we can make a future video about that as well. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.